Welcome to r slash am I the jerk, where OP's girlfriend won't let him have female friends. My partner wants me to cut off the friend who introduced us and I'm really lost. I'm 27 male. My girlfriend Eva, who's 25, of nearly 6 years and I were talking about the prospect of getting engaged recently when she brought up that it was her expectation that once I propose, I'd also cut off contact with Leia, who's 27. One of my closest friends, as well as the person who introduced us. Both names are made up, by the way. Some backstory. Leia and I went to the same middle school and high school, became friends along the way, and had become quite close by graduation. We didn't go to the same college, but we were still in the same area, so we stayed in touch, though we saw each other less frequently. A couple years in, she told me I absolutely had to meet this girl because she just knew I'd like her. She dragged us both, both Eva and I were and still are introverts, to Leia's social butterfly persona, to a small get-together, introduced us, did some wing manning, and made herself scarce for the rest of the evening. Spoiler alert, Leia was right, and I did like Eva a lot from the get-go. We shared interests, hobbies, a sense of humor, and we clicked from the first evening. Leia made sure to give me every chance to not fumble this by setting up our first date shortly thereafter, and I, thankfully, surprisingly, didn't fumble it. Soon enough, Eva and I were officially together and in love, moved in together once I got a job, and it felt like a foregone conclusion that eventually we'd get engaged, married, and all of that stuff. Eva's recent demand came completely out of left field to me, as she had never even raised concerns about my friendship with Leia until now, and as far as I could tell, counted Leia as a friend of hers as well. Over the course of this relationship, the majority of my in-person interactions with Leia also involved Eva, and we each met with her individually outside of that. To be clear, I'm not denying that I'm closer to Leia than Eva is, just saying they're not complete strangers without me in the equation. A key issue Eva raised is that I did once have a crush on Leia. Once, in this case, refers to when I was 15 and had just gotten to know her, and is something Eva and I discussed within our first month of dating when she asked me if there had ever been anything between us. I didn't hide anything from her, told her there was a one-sided crush at the very beginning, that that had been history for a while, and that nothing ever happened. She was fine with that then, and this is the first time she's brought it up ever since. However, she now says that if she and I are to tie the knot, she does not want someone in our lives who I once had a romantic interest in. She added that she hadn't liked my getting involved in Leia's last serious relationship by telling her to ditch the guy, which I did because she's my friend and the dude was a jerk, and that while she didn't suspect that anything had happened between me and Leia at this stage, she didn't want to take the chance, especially as Leia now has pronounced interest in finding someone to settle down with. Eva told me there's no hurry and that this was an ultimatum and didn't want to argue about it, but that I should wrap my head around this ahead of proposing to her, which we weren't talking about as a tomorrow thing, but not something too far in the future either. I haven't talked to Leia or anyone really about this yet, because I'm still hoping this is something that can be diffused and bringing her into it now seems counterproductive in that regard. I'm really conflicted. On one hand, Leia is an important friend to me, one who's done a lot for me over the years, brought me out of my shell when I was an awkward teen. On the other hand, by far, what I'm most thankful for to her is that she introduced me to Eva. But I don't really feel like Eva is making much of a case here. I'd even be willing to concede that the near-forgotten and short-lived crush could still be a valid argument, but not when it was a non-issue for six years. I just don't know how I'm supposed to approach this. And when I say I don't know how to approach this, I don't mean I don't know whether or not I'll cut Leia out of my life. As things are, and from the reasons Eva has given me, I don't consider cutting Leia out an option. What I mean is that I'm not sure how to approach this with Eva to defuse the situation and not lose her if it can all be avoided. If you wanted to get with Leia, you could have tried something again far before meeting Eva. It's a little weird to me that you both have been together six years and Eva would drop this kind of bomb on you to cut out an important friendship from your life. I get some will get on the whole guys and girls can't be friends and that once married, some see it as appropriate to cut off communication with friends of the opposite gender. I think this is just a BS attempt to admit that people like that don't trust their partner. She said she doesn't want to give an ultimatum, so tell her, I love you, but I'm not going to cut out important people from my life as grounds for a proposal. Don't even go the route of asking her to cut her male friends out. As for a silly crush back when you were 15, this is just part of her trusting you to not do her over. After all, what else is love than that? I wonder if she knows something about Leia regarding you, or if Leia said something like, you're so lucky, I'm so sad I missed my shot with him. OP, I did ask her if anything had triggered this stance from her and specifically mentioned if it was something I or Leia did or said, 
and it was in that context that she brought up my intervening in Leia's relationship, which was a year and change ago, but she didn't point out anything that Leia said or did. Update. So this weekend, after getting my thoughts in order, I let Eva know we needed to talk and what it was about. She initially pushed back, reiterating she didn't want to argue, but I insisted and told her it shouldn't need to be an argument and we should be able to discuss this. I proceeded by telling her that she is the one I love and want to be with, that Leia is still just a friend, albeit an important one, but I would not be cutting her out of my life, as that was an unreasonable request to make in the absence of inappropriate behavior from either of us. I told her that this stance was final and added that I hoped we'd be able to communicate and get to the bottom of where this all stemmed from and move forward together. She wasn't happy about this, but she didn't shut down the discussion either, and we had a long talk afterwards. Among other things, she again conceded that Leia hadn't done or said anything to cause this issue. As it turns out, a bigger factor for her was my involvement in Leia's breakup. She told me that she didn't disagree that the guy was a jerk, or even that someone needed to convince Leia to break it off, but that she hadn't been comfortable about the way I'd gone about it. I talked about it in a comment on the original post, but basically, I just up and decided to do it myself at some point, went to Leia's place, and convinced her that she deserved better. At the time, I told Eva I'd be doing that, but didn't consult with her about the how or anything. She went on to say she had had this sinking feeling that I was not just a friend in Leia's eyes anymore since then. She mentioned Leia had been single ever since, not dating much yet, had voiced a desire to settle down soon, and that I was the guy closest to her. She admitted these things weren't in and of themselves evidence of anything, but that she couldn't shake the feeling. I told her that I didn't think it was the case, and that Leia had always been and continued to be supportive of our relationship, and that maybe talking to her about it could help. We put that thought aside for the time being, and I brought up that her request suggested that she didn't really trust me, and that was a big issue. Eva didn't really know what to say to that, aside from reiterating she wasn't accusing me of having done anything, or of having any intention to, that this was about Leia, and that if she was right about her seeing me differently now, our proximity would be a problem whether anything happened or not. I told her that I agreed with that last point on principle, but that it all hinged on a basically unsubstantiated if. Lastly, I asked Eva how all this had affected her own friendship with Leia, because I hadn't noticed major changes there. She told me that she doesn't harbor any animosity towards Leia. I brought up couples therapy at various points throughout this discussion. Eva was initially apprehensive about the idea, but I insisted that it wasn't a matter of doubting my relationship with her, but one of getting qualified counseling to help us get through this stronger than before. We started looking into it, and this will make it on the agenda once we find someone suitable. End of the day, Eva abandoned the idea of forcing me to cut Leia out of my life at this stage, but we have things to sort through still. I'm glad I was able to actually discuss it with her this time, and hopefully counseling will provide the help we need. Woman's intuition is usually right. Eva seems like a reasonable person. I suggest you talk to Leia instead of convincing Eva she's imagining things. I'm positive you will find out that Leia wants more than friendship with you. At the end of the day, Eva is not comfortable with her closeness with Leia. Why is it difficult for you to acknowledge that and go low contact with Leia? The idea that you could tell your future spouse to cut off their friends of many years just because is so far from reasonable, I can't even see it. Making it a condition of proposing is just so weird. Leia hasn't done anything wrong. OP hasn't done anything wrong. Even if Eva and the Greek Reddit chorus are right and Leia has developed feelings, she hasn't acted on them at all. Eva has a feeling and that's all, and she decided that was enough to essentially say, it's her or me. If she'll do that with someone OP has known since middle school, who else would she do it with if OP hadn't pushed back? And then trying to shut down discussions claiming she doesn't want to argue? Does she think that's how this works? If you want to get married, you have to lose your friend, and I don't want to argue about this. You just have to wrap your head around it. What does she think an ultimatum is exactly, if she doesn't think that was one? I'm sorry, but this is so messed up. I'm glad OP is pushing for counseling. Getting married should not mean having to lose friends. My husband made lunch plans with his friend the day before my C-section and didn't consider inviting me. I, 31 female, am 9 months pregnant with our first and I'm booked in for a cesarean tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. My husband, who's 38, is on his second day of parental leave. He will be off work for a month. We had told family we will be hanging out at home together all day today getting the last few things organized for the hospital tomorrow. It was my understanding that we would be spending the day together, essentially pottering around the house and spending time together. This morning, his mom suggested she come over for coffee to see us before the baby arrives. He said again we would just be home today 
so that would be fine and to come over whenever she liked. When it got to 11 a.m. and she hadn't arrived yet, he then said he was annoyed because he was going to be late for a pub lunch with his friend. I was surprised to hear he had made lunch plans and said to him, you're going for lunch? What about me? He said he didn't think I'd want to come along and it wasn't a big deal. I felt disappointed as he has a habit of not considering inviting me when making plans during our time off together, which has mostly been our weekends up until now. His mom came over for a visit, which was enjoyable and uneventful. His lunch was brought up by him and his mom agreed with me that it was a bit strange he had organized to do something without me today. He said again he didn't think it would matter and it's his last day before becoming a father as well. After she left, he asked if I wanted to come for lunch. By this point, I decided I didn't want to because I felt like a third wheel and unwelcomed, so I said no. I was setting up the baby monitor when he came in to tell me I should cut him some slack because he's going to be looking after me and the baby for the next month, which is an exaggeration, but fine. So he should be able to go out for an hour if he wants to. He also wanted me to tell him he wasn't going to have to hear about this again, meaning I understood it was fine and wouldn't bring it up again. This caused an argument as I wouldn't say it wouldn't get mentioned again and I ended up telling him that I felt disappointed when he had made plans without me and I felt unimportant. He got angry. I cried. He left for lunch and I don't know whether I'm in the wrong or not. It's not really about him going out with his friend. Usually it 100% wouldn't matter at all. But as it's our last day together before our baby arrives, I would have just liked to have been factored into the decision making and not be told as an aside after plans are already made. Am I the jerk? Update. We're both feeling a lot with everything going on tomorrow and emotions and tensions were definitely running high. He wasn't being his best self in the moment and I've definitely had my moments of being hormonal and erupting lately. So while I agree I'm not the jerk in this instance, I'll accept that there has been some increased sensitivity and insecurity on my part that added weight to the situation. Husband apologized not long after I posted, returned home and is currently hanging some shelves in the nursery. Sorry to those who suggested we ended, and super sorry to the one person who suggested he was out with a side chick. How are you surprised that he did not consider you? He's shown you what type of person he is, so believe him. You're not his priority when it comes to his free time. It's time you set clear boundaries and expectations around your time now that there will be a baby involved. Don't get me wrong, we all need time to ourselves without our partners. When I was married, we each had a day to ourselves to do as we wished without the other person each month. Both of you need to work on your communication or this issue will snowball. Am I the jerk for telling my son that I think he's taking advantage of his girlfriend? I'm 59, female. My son, who's 23, has a baby with his ex-girlfriend. The baby is two. I don't want to break the subreddit's rules, but essentially, she baby trapped him and it was a very toxic relationship. There was a massive issue with the paternity of my grandson, but I'm very proud of how he dealt with the situation. He never stopped loving or caring for the kid usually on his own, even when he wasn't sure if the baby was his. Now my son is dating a much nicer girl, Grace, who's 19. She's the best friend of my youngest son, who's 20. Grace loves kids. She adores my grandson and often calls him her baby. My grandson likes her too and it's very adorable. I've known Grace for a long time and I think she's just perfect. The issue is, my son has started to give her a lot of childcare responsibilities. My grandson's biological mother is hardly involved and my son is usually co-parenting with her parents instead of her, so we have our grandson for most of the time. Once, Grace spent the night in the hospital with my grandson while my son was studying for an exam, and it seemed like her life slowly started to revolve around my grandson and his naps, his feeding schedule, etc. Every free moment she has from college and work is spent with my grandson. I don't want to interfere, but I'm going to be realistic. They've only been together for a year, and what if they don't work out? then my grandson will be attached to someone he won't see anymore. Additionally, she's very young and needs to live her life instead of being a mom so young. Last week, my grandson was sick and my son had returned from work to come check on him. Grace was cuddling him at this point as she had been with him the whole day. My son tried to take him, but he wanted to stay with Grace, so she said she would stay up with him and call out of work the next day. This is also not the first time she's missed work or school to care for my grandson. Grace took him upstairs and my husband made a comment about how my son didn't need to try so hard with his ex anymore to get her to parent when Grace was right here being his mother. My son then said Grace was a godsend because without her, he'd get no sleep. I took him aside and told him that I thought he was taking advantage of her and her time. He asked me what I meant 
and I told him that at 19, he was partying and having a blast every weekend, but Grace was busy caring for a sick kid that wasn't even hers. I pointed out that she was missing out on work and school for him, and my son got upset. He said that it was good she wasn't partying, because it wasn't good or safe anyway. He then took Grace and his son back to his place and hasn't let me see my grandson since. My husband thinks I was out of line because Grace is helping our son through difficult times and I'm starting to feel bad. My son wants an apology and he wants me to promise not to bring this up to Grace and give her any ideas. Edit. I just want to clear something up. My son is not partying and leaving my grandson with Grace. I told him that at 19 he was out partying and at 19 Grace is being a mother to a kid that isn't hers. I was making a comparison. Not the jerk. The sentence that seals the deal is that he doesn't want you to give Grace any ideas. In other words, he 100% knows he's taking advantage and doesn't want to rebalance. He will make Grace a terrible long-term partner. Two co-workers are having an affair. How can I inform the wife? I, 25 female, work as a receptionist. Four months ago, I made this stupid decision to recommend my now former best friend Jane, who's 25, for an open position after someone had left. It's a prestigious hotel, so they are very selective about their hiring process. Jane had little to no experience, so I took a risk by vouching for her. Looking back, it was dumb, but I knew she was a hard worker and I could have never guessed what was to come. I trained her during her first month and she picked up things very quickly. After that, we began working separate shifts. It was around this time that I started noticing a weird dynamic between her and John, who's 35, male, our chief receptionist. One night when I arrived for my shift, I found them acting all giggly and their body language just seemed off. They didn't notice me at first, but when they did, they tried a little too much to act cool, which raised some red flags. There have been too many similar situations over the months, but I tried to deny it. John just had a baby and his wife comes in at least four to five times a week, sometimes with the baby too. Jane sees this as well and I just couldn't think that she would do something like that. But the awkward tension, quick glances and giggles just wouldn't quit. So I brought it up two weeks ago when we were out for drinks. I was floored by her response. She confessed in a playful manner, almost like sharing a dirty secret. She said they couldn't keep their hands off each other and that she had wanted to spill the tea but didn't want to involve me in the drama. When I brought up his wife and their newborn, she said she didn't care. Apparently John told her that they had been sleeping in separate beds and his wife stopped caring about their marriage after the pregnancy and other BS like that. I was disgusted and we had a major fight. She stormed off and cut contact with me. Since then, going to work has been horrible. John is in charge of our shifts and ever since our fight, he's been giving me the worst shifts and making sure that we're not scheduled together. I've considered telling the wife since day one, but I don't have any proof. Same with our manager in HR. I texted Jane saying, tell your boyfriend to stop giving me the worst shifts, hoping for a response that could serve as evidence, but she didn't reply. One week ago, someone got sick and I had to work with the two evil jerks. Close to our lunch break, John's wife came in to bring him lunch. She looked very tired too and my heart broke for her. Then I noticed something on John's wrist. He had Jane's scrunchie on his wrist. He also has long hair, but I know for a fact it's hers. He held and kissed the baby with his scrunchie on. I had a panic attack, I think, at the smoking area. I was crying and I couldn't breathe. I come from a divorced family because of my father's infidelity, so this hits too close to home. I'm losing sleep. Please tell me what I should do in this situation. Should I send the wife an anonymous message? I only have her on Instagram. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I don't know about telling the wife, but I'd be tempted to tell John, not your friend, that he had better stop giving you the worst shifts just because his girlfriend thinks it's fun to hook up with a married man. And the nerve of saying his wife doesn't care about the marriage since the baby. Yeah. She's probably just trying to not lose it with not getting sleep and dealing with a newborn. Man, babies are the worst. Am I the jerk for divorcing my wife after she refused to help me financially in difficult times? I, 30 male, am divorcing my wife, who's 30 female, of four years because she did not help me financially when I needed it. I work in a very niche industry and last year or so has been really difficult due to market conditions. Many of my colleagues got laid off and so was I. At the time, I had newly refurnished our home, so I was in debt. My wife also works, but she earned less than me back then. I went to her and asked if she can help me while I search for work. I proposed that we should sell some of the gold that was given to us at the wedding. 
We live in Turkey and there's a tradition of giving gold to newlyweds to help them financially. These are meant to be used during difficult times. She rejected the idea and said, I do not want to sell my gold. I tried to reason with her by saying closing the debt would greatly help us to be more stable financially. She refused and told me to sort it out myself somehow. I asked her to at least use some of her savings and I can pay it back. Context here is that I let her save most of her earnings while paying most of the things myself due to women being vulnerable to financial changes more than men here. I wanted her to build her own savings and made sure to help her with a retirement account as well. I asked her to give me some of her savings for debt and I can pay her back once I sort myself out. She refused that too. This period has been extremely difficult for me. I fell into depression and contemplated my choices in life. Funny thing is, everything was going great before this and I thought we would stay together through thick and thin. My older sister helped me to pay the monthly installments during that time. At the beginning of this year, I found a great job in the same industry and I'm thrilled right now. I could not look at my wife in the same way after what happened and started divorce talks with a lawyer friend of mine. Last month, I let her know my decision and she was served with divorce papers soon after. For her, apparently, it was an unexpected thing and she was shocked. She tried to talk me out of it, but I was firm in my decision. Families tend to be involved with each other here and that was the case for us too. She put families in between as mediators, but I do not want to be married to someone who will not help me during difficult times especially when I was considering their financial well-being. Most of my family supports my decision, but they would like me to reconsider if possible. I know every other thing is without a problem, but I can't get over what happened. Am I the jerk here? Not the jerk. You don't have a partner. You have a person who's fun to spend time with when things are good, but it's nowhere to be found when things are bad. Karen's sister demands I pay for her wedding because I can afford it. I, 33 female, have a younger sister, Jamie, who's 31, who got engaged to her fiancé a few months ago, and now she's deep into the wedding planning. Our parents gifted us $25,000 each as a wedding present when we got engaged to help with wedding expenses and just to help us get started with some savings. For background, I got married two years ago to my husband, and we practically had little to no expenses. We just did a small wedding ceremony and celebration in my parents' backyard, and I used my mom's old dress so our only expenses were really just food and photography. Due to this, we saved $20,000 of the money we were gifted and just put it into savings. Although my husband and I were happy with our day, Jamie had a lot to say. She practically spent every single family event after the wedding gossiping about how my wedding was so trashy and cheap. I think she expected a lot more from me because I work as a software engineer and my husband is a surgeon and we could have afforded to have had a much nicer wedding. Now it's time for her wedding and she has plans to go all out for it, which I wouldn't care about if she could afford it. But instead, she's become a greedy bridezilla asking anyone and everyone for cash. My parents refuse to give more than the original $25,000 and the other family members have chipped in, but maybe $5,000 max combined. Unfortunately, my sister knows I saved the $20,000 from my parents and that my husband and I have a good amount of money saved up because of our salaries. She's been asking me nonstop to give her the $20,000 as a wedding gift or help pay another one of her events like the bridal shower, bachelorette, rehearsal dinner, or honeymoon. Her reasoning is that my husband and I could easily afford to gift her one of these things and I even gifted my cousin a honeymoon vacation as a wedding gift last year, so why couldn't I do something similar for my only sibling when I did it for my cousin? She's right in the sense that I could easily afford to pay for parts of her wedding, but in all honesty, I don't want to give her anything after she treated me so poorly following my own wedding. I told her my reasoning and that I don't want to financially support someone who didn't support me on my big day. And now she's been ignoring me, going around telling family that I'm extremely selfish and immature for this. Apparently, she's already put down deposits on a lot of services and vendors for her plans and just expected me to help pay for it. But now she has no way of paying the vendors and she can't get her deposits back either. So now, my family wants me to help her out so that she doesn't lose the little money she already has. I just don't see how this is my problem. Am I the jerk? Not the jerk. She got a sum of money for it, and if she can't stay within that budget, nobody else needs to pay her a penny. You don't owe her even five cents. You were smart to have a low-budget wedding and have money for other things after. Smart, smart, smart. She was rude, rude, rude. Sister's audacity is so lacking in self-awareness that it's almost comical. 
Even if she hadn't spent the last two years publicly trashing OP's wedding, she still wouldn't be entitled to any money. And her behavior after OP's decision only shows that OP made the right one. Not the jerk. Why do people plan events that are outside their budget and then expect others to make up the difference? $25,000 is a lot of money if spent wisely. It seems she banked on having the $20,000 you saved from the outset. No, just plain no. Forget your HOA and its ridiculous rules. Back in high school, I was all about my car. Don't get me wrong, it was a rolling piece of junk, but it was my car. It had a trade-in value of maybe $5, but it was my car. I was learning how to take care of it, by which I mean I found where the dipstick was and how to pull it. I hadn't yet moved on to tire inflation, one step at a time. One day after school, I drove over to my friend's place. We jump out, pop the hood, pull the dipstick, check the oil, and it was fine, so put the hood back down. I had no idea what an HOA was, nor what it meant. I was just a happy, ignorant teenager, eager to demonstrate how responsible I was with my wheels. A few days go by, and we're hanging out at my friend's place when his mom comes home. She starts giving us the business in that, I'm annoyed but try not to be, voice about a warning she received from the HOA regarding repairing cars in your driveway, complete with a photo of my car with the hood up. Really, she was being pretty good, though clearly annoyed. We explained that we weren't repairing anything, that I was just checking the oil levels and didn't even need any tools. Picture it just had the hood up. She softened quite a bit and the focus of her annoyance shifted from us to the HOA since it's entirely reasonable for anyone to check the level of oil in a car. She finds her copy of the HOA rules and we all read them together. Sure enough, there's a bylaw that says you can't repair a car in the driveway. I protest that I wasn't repairing anything, I was just checking the oil. Reading the exact rules on exactly what was forbidden sparked an idea. I look at my friend, raise an eyebrow, and say, Fight the power? Fight the power. I propose my plan to his mom and ask for permission since she's going to have to deal with the fallout. She's on board since she thinks this is supremely stupid and we set in motion. Cue the malicious compliance. Every day after school, my friend and I drove our cars to his place, parked in their driveway, raised the hoods, and just looked at the engines. No tools. We weren't even near them. We didn't check the oil. We didn't so much as touch them nor wipe them down with a rag. All we did was expose them to the birds, the sky, and God above to just let them breathe. After a while, I got bored, so I started setting up an easel and drawing my engine 10 minutes at a time. My friend had to one-up me, so decided he needed some tasteful artistic photos with his engine. He judged the best photos would be him laying over the engine shirtless and fake kissing it. Just absurd, over-the-top, moronic high schooler stuff. Predictably, the HOA was on us quickly. The warnings quickly turned into fines, complete with pictures of both vehicles with their hoods up. Then more pictures with mine with its hood up and an easel in front. Then even more pictures with my friends with its hood up, him laying on the engine compartment and me taking pictures of him with the camera. Soon enough, his mom let us know that it was time for the monthly HOA meeting. Of course, all three of us had to go in person to protest the fines. So the motley pair of us show up along with his mom and his mom's stack of fine notices. I bring along my engine drawing and we printed some of my friend's engine photos larger than normal. After a while, it was new business time and my friend's mom steps up. I'm pretty sure they expected her to play the, my son and his friend are morons, please make these fines go away since I didn't know what they were doing, sympathy card. Nope, not a chance. She politely but firmly attested that she was being sent fines for something that wasn't in the bylaws and asked the board to stop. One of the board members spoke up saying that working on cars was against the bylaws and clearly that's what was going on since both hoods were up. Oh, you should have seen their faces when she corrected them that the bylaw said no repairs were allowed, that there were no repairs going on in any of the pictures since no tools were visible and that we were just doing art projects for school. Even longer faces were seen when she showed my truthfully completely terrible drawing of my engine, along with the date stamped a couple of weeks ago pictures. This was back when film cameras stamped the date directly on the picture of my friend kissing his engine. The HOA president called for a five minute recess during which the board huddled in a corner of the room. After the recess, the president succinctly said, ma'am, we're going to dismiss all of your fines. Have a nice evening. We darn near danced out of that meeting. Being the obnoxious jerks that my friend and I were, 
We had to do the drawing and photo routine a few more times just to make sure they weren't going to start sending more fines. They wisely didn't, and being victorious, we soon found other ways to annoy them. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist, where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you, based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.